This is going to be a quick review here, uh, just showing a couple of the features on this Baofeng UV82. Uh, this was a basic dual band radio that I picked up on Amazon relatively cheaply. Uh, and I just wanted to show a couple of the features here on this radio. Uh, so I use it, of course, on a 2 meter band. I'm a ham radio operator. And I'm just going to go down here. I've got uh, several memories programmed in, common repeater frequencies, that kind of stuff. But what I want to show you here today is I have this connected to a power meter, SWR meter, and that's connected to a dummy load sitting right over here. And that's all that I have connected to it right now. I've got a, a bunch of adapters here to make it work. Uh, I don't have another female SMA adapter to plug in here, but this works out all right. Uh, so I'm just going to show you a couple little things here on this radio. Uh, first of all, I'm going to move it over here to our local uh, NOAA weather radio station. And you can see here that it's receiving it. You can see that it's receiving a signal right now. This is our local National Weather Service frequency. And I'm in my basement right now, and I have a dummy load connected to it, and it's receiving the National Weather Service frequency through a dummy load and through about four feet of coax. So it has a pretty sensitive receiver. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show here, uh, I just wanted to test to see what the power output of this radio is. So uh, I'm going to turn it off because I've got, um, I'm going to start with 440, and I've got 440 in the VFO. So to get into the VFO mode, you have to hold down the menu button here and turn it on. So let me see if I can do this. All right, so there we are. We're over here on uh, 445 megahertz. If you can look at the display real closely, you can see the little arrow. Right now the arrow uh, to the left of the digits is pointed down. It's next to the 438500. That would be the band uh, that it's receiving on right now. I'm going to hit AB. And so now we're up on the 445. Um, if you're not aware already, this radio has two push-to-talk switches here over here on the side. So I can transmit on either of these, regardless of where the arrow is. Uh, so if I press down, it'll transmit on the lower one. If I press on the upper PTT, it'll transmit on the upper one. All right. So let's check the power output of this radio. Uh, once again, it's connected to my power SWR meter here. So, um, I'm just going to transmit here. I'm on high power on this radio. And if I can get close enough here, and if I can focus on that. There you go. Right now, looks like it's about 3 watts. So let me calibrate my meter just to be sure. So now we're in calibrate. Tough to do this one-handed. All right, so there we are. Now we're calibrated. Switch it back over here to power. Double check that. A little over three watts, according to this meter. And I'm transmitting right now on 445 megahertz, which is right in the middle of the 440 band, uh, where the FM part of the band where the repeaters are. Of course, this is going to be closer to the output of the repeaters, not the transmit. Uh, Part of uh, not the input of the repeaters, but you know it's still in that same area. All right, so let's switch over here to two meters and see what kind of uh, what kind of power we get out. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in. Okay, common two meter repeater frequency. This is the lowest uh, coordinated frequency, 145.110. All right, so I'm going to come back over here to my meter. And again, I'm running a dummy load right now uh, over here. So I'm not, not worried about bringing up a repeater here on this dummy load. Let's go ahead and focus. 20 watts. Probably ought to calibrate first. Yep, ought to calibrate that. Bring it back down. A 
repair more. All right, we're calibrated there. On key, switch it over to power. And when I get a transmit, look at that. That's about eight watts. It's a lot of power on two meters from a handheld. Um, maybe seven and a half. It's quite a bit of power. Uh, let's see what that does on the other end of the band. We'll move up to one four seven four two zero. All right, here we go. Take a look at the meter. Can we transmit. Yep, that's a solid eight watts right there, right on the line. Interesting. So, um, I'm going to move into the MERS frequencies. Now, this radio is not type accepted to transmit on these frequencies. However, I'm in a dummy load right now. And so this is just an experiment to see what the power output is, since it seems to be going up the higher frequency that I go. So, this is the highest MERS frequency here, 154,600. So, I'm going to come back over here to my meter and focus on my meter. And when I transmit, about 9 watts. That's a lot of power for a handheld. All right, so... If I keep going up in frequency, let's see what else I can find in here. Uh, Alright, we've got our National Weather Service frequencies up here, real high, 162 megahertz. Right here, 156,800, um, Marine Channel 16, again in a dummy load. Alright, we're going to transmit and we're at about 8 watts. So this seems to be uh, calibrated to give you the highest power output just above 150 megahertz. Um, when you get up here to 156 it seems a little bit like it's going to drop off just a little bit. But that is a lot of power for a handheld. Now I'm going to show you one other thing here. Speaking of power on 2 meters, uh, when I hold the radio like this using, its inter or using the uh, antenna that came with it I get an RF burn in my hand from these battery contacts back here. So this will actually burn me. I'll have RF go into my hand. It'll feel like a little pin going into my hand right where these contacts are here on this battery. And so I can't hold this radio like this and transmit that way. Now I'm not feeling it when I'm in this coax and in this dummy load. What I have to do is hold it with my other hand like this and then I don't feel it.